In this video, we're going to go over the nomenclature of alkenes. We're going to talk about the cis and trans uh, isomers, and also the ENZ naming system. But let's start with the basics. So how can we name this particular alkene? Now the first thing you need to know is the common names of the alkanes, from 1 to 10. A 1-carbon alkane is known as methane. A 2-carbon alkane, ethane. 3 is for propane. 4 is for butane, 5 pentane, 6 hexane, 7 heptane, 8 octane, 9 nonane, 10 decane. So in this particular uh, compound, we have 4 carbon atoms. So that's associated with butane. But because we have an alkene, it's going to be butene. And the double bond is between carbons 1 and 2. But you need to pick the lower number of those two, so this is known as 1-butene. Some textbooks might write it this way, but-1-ene. So you can also write it that way as well. Now what about this example? How would you name this particular alkene? So should we count it from the left side or from the right side? If we count it starting from the left, notice that the alkene is on carbon 3. But if we count it from the right side, notice that it's on carbon 2. And you want to count it in such a way that um, you will get the lower numbers. So this is going to be called 2-pentene since we have a 5-carbon chain. Don't forget to add the suffix ene for alkenes whenever you have a double bond. Try this example. Now, if we count it from the left, the alkene will be on carbon 3. If we count it from the right, it would still be on carbon 3. However, the methyl will be on carbon 5. If we count it from the left, the methyl will be on carbon 2. So therefore, you want to count it from left to right. So this is going to be 2-methyl dash 3 dash hexene since the double bond is on carbon 3 and a 6 carbon chain is hexane but we gotta add the suffix ene now how about this example what if we have two double bonds what should we do in this case now we have a total of four carbons, which is associated with the name butane. But since we have two double bonds, we need to add the suffix diene for the two double bonds. So we have a double bond at one and at three. So it's called one comma three buta diene. The use of a comma is required to separate two numbers. And the use of a hyphen is required to separate a number and a letter. Go ahead and try this example. So what direction should we number it? From the left or from the right? If we start from the left, the double bond will be at 1. If we start on the right, it's going to be at 2 and the other one is going to have a much higher number. So let's count them both ways. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. That means we will have a double bond at 1 and 5. If we count it the other way, we're going to have a double bond at 2 and 6. So 1 is lower than 2, so let's count it the other way. So we have a methyl on carbon 3. Let's begin with that. So this is going to be 3-methyl dash. Now we have a double bond at 1 and 5. So it's 1, comma 5. And it's a 7-carbon chain. So we're dealing with heptane. But instead of saying heptane, it's going to be heptadiene. And so that is the name of this particular molecule. Now what about cycloalkenes? So what if we have a double bond in a ring? How can we name it? 
instead of saying cyclohexane, this is simply cyclohexene. And if you only have a double bond, one double bond in a ring, it's automatically assumed to be carbon one. So you don't have to say one cyclohexene, you could just simply say cyclohexene because the double bond has to be on carbon one. So knowing that, what is the name of this particular molecule? Feel free to pause the video as you work out this example. Now, if we choose to count it this way, the methyl will be on carbon 5. However, if we choose to count it this way, the methyl will be on carbon 3. So let's count it that way. This is going to be 3 methyl cyclopentene since it's a 5 carbon ring. Now we don't have to say 3 methyl dash 1 cyclopentene. As we've mentioned before, the double bond is on carbon 1. Now what about this example? Let's name this molecule. Now the double bond has more priority than the bromine atom in terms of naming. So we're going to start counting from the double bond. We want to count it this way. We want the double bonds to have the lowest numbers. If we start from the middle, It's just not going to work out that way. We'll have a double bond at 1, 3, and 6 as opposed to 1, 3, and 5. So this is the way we should count it. So it's going to be called 7 bromo dash. We have a double bond at 1, 3, and 5. So 1, 3, 5. And it's a 7 carbon ring, so we're dealing with heptane or cycloheptane. So it's cyclo hepta triene, since we have three double bonds. Diene is for two double bonds, triene is for three, tetraene in case you have four. Try this one. Now, in this particular example, you need to identify the longest chain. And you want the double bond to be included in the longest chain. And you want to get the double bond the lowest number. So you want to start counting here. This is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's not, this is not the longest chain. The longest chain actually contains 7 carbons. So we have a heptane or heptene. Now, this is an ethyl group because it has two carbons, and this is another ethyl group. So we have an ethyl group on carbons 2 and 4. So this is going to be called 2,4-diethyl-1-heptene, since the double bond is on carbon 1. What is the name of these two alkenes? We talked about this one earlier in the video. If we number it, we could see that we have a 5 carbon chain and a double bond at 2. So this is called 2 pentene. However, if you, if you look at the one on the right, it's also um, called 2 pentene. So what is the difference between these two molecules? because they're not exactly the same. Double bonds are not free to rotate. And so these are actually two different molecules. On the left, notice that the hydrogens that are connected to the double bond, they're opposite to each other. But on the right, they're on the same side. This is the trans isomer. And on the right, we have the cis isomer. So this is called trans. 2-pentene, and this is cis-2-pentene. Now, for more complicated examples, where you have 
a lot of different substituents attached to the double bond, you may want to use the E and Z system. So first, let's determine if we have the E isomer or the Z isomer. The E isomer is similar to the trans isomer, and the Z isomer is similar to the cis isomer. Now, what you need to do is determine which group has a higher priority, and it's based on the atomic number. So if we compare bromine and carbon, you need to pair two groups on the same carbon atom or attached to the same side of the double bond. Bromine has a higher atomic number than carbon, so bromine has a higher priority than carbon. Now, between methyl and hydrogen, methyl wins because carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen. Now, if the two highest priorities are on the same side, you have the Z isomer. If they were on opposite sides, that would be the E isomer, it would be trans-like, so to speak. Now, what about naming this particular molecule? What is the name for it? So let's identify the longest chain. One, two, three, four. We want to count from left to right so that the bromine atom is on carbon two instead of carbon three. So this is going to be called Z, since we have the Z isomer, dash 2 bromo dash 2 butene. Now, what about this example? How can we name this particular alkene? So first, let's determine if we have the E isomer or the Z isomer. And let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's make this a CH3. Now, you can't say it's cis or trans because you don't know which two groups to compare to. If you had two hydrogens, let's say this was a hydrogen, then you could say it's cis because the two hydrogens are on the same side. But when you have four different groups, you can't really describe it in terms of cis or trans. You need to use the E and Z system. So let's compare chlorine and hydrogen. Which of these two groups have the highest priority? Well, chlorine has a higher atomic number, so it's going to be chlorine. Now, if we compare the ethyl group and the methyl group, which one has more priority? Well, ethyl is going to win against methyl since it has more carbons. So notice that the two highest groups are on the same side. So we have another Z isomer. So this is going to be called Z. And then let's identify the longest chain. So it's going to be carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have a chloro on 1, a methyl on 2. And let's put it in alphabetical order. So it's 1 chloro dash 2 methyl. dash 1 butene, since we have four carbons total in the longest chain. Now let's try a harder example. Let's try this one. So take a minute and see if you can name this particular alkene including with the E and Z system. Now the first thing I would do is identify each alkene as being, each double bond as being E or Z. So let's draw the hydrogens that are located on each of these double bonds. So if we compare the hydrogen and the methyl, the methyl group has uh, more priority. And if we compare chlorine and this group, so you're looking at the carbon atom first versus the chlorine. Chlorine has a higher atomic number than carbon, so chlorine has more priority. So the highest groups are on the same side, therefore this is the Z isomer. Now let's focus on the next double bond. On this side of the double bond, we're comparing the methyl and the ethyl group. The ethyl group wins because it has more carbons. 
And on this side of the double bond, we're comparing the hydrogen compared to this, and hydrogen always loses, with the exception of comparing it to another hydrogen atom, which will be pointless. So this side has the higher priority. So notice that this is the E isomer. For it to be the Z, these two would have to have the highest priority, or these two, because those would be on the same side. But these two groups are on opposite sides, so we have the E isomer. Now let's put it together. So let's identify the longest chain. We want to count from left to right so that the first alkene will have a number of 2 instead of 3. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now the double bond at 2 is associated with the Z isomer, so we're going to put 2Z. And at 5, it's associated with the E isomer. So if you have two or more double bonds, you need to put the number next to the E or Z letter to specify each double bond and its specific uh, stereochemistry, so to speak. Now we have a chloro group on 3 and a methyl on 6. So let's put it in alphabetical order. It's going to be 3 chloro dash 6 methyl dash we have a double bond on 2 and 5 so 2 comma 5 dash octa since we have a total of 8 carbons octadiene since we have 2 double bonds and that is it for this video thanks for watching and have a great day